please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. TED Movie Thoughts. I'm gonna start with supposed and I guess actual plot holes. I should maybe get the the one the ones that are really not plot holes at all out of the way. If one wanted to really nitpick, one might say that at the end, when we are informed that crap, uh, Giovanni Rubisi's character, I don't remember the character's name, he is not prosecuted for Ted napping. He doesn't. He, yeah, he's, he's free. Wouldn't he still go after Ted so that plot hasn't really been resolved? Yeah, like I said, nitpick. And just ponder for a second the line of Ted's. My cousin who knows, yeah, m c cousin, how many teddy bears exactly did John wish into existence? Or is it like all the teddy bears ever wished into existence? Since, you know, a boy's wish is more powerful than anything else, except for a Apache helicopter. Wow. I think Patrick Stewart had a lot of fun doing the narration. Anyway, yeah, are, are all the teddy bears brought to life all over the world in the history of time related to each other, or how exactly? But I think that was just a line that was supposed to induce severe head-scratching in people questioning the logic of the film. I, I have a feeling that Seth did that one on purpose. Now... There are a couple of more actual plot holes, but I'm not sure they're really severe. The, the, the thing about how Giovanni knows where Ted is, because um, he was at Lori's place. I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be that he was stalking Ted secretly, him and the boy, ever since they saw them at the park. Uh, and I guess the park wasn't exactly a chance encounter either. That really begs the question why it took him so long. Why he didn't... Because it's not like the, the his kid is his kid is young, which was what, what I was gonna say. But he he's not newborn. It's not like I mean, did did he just yeah? Why why did he wait? Is my point. Is yeah. Overall, I think there is a plot hole somewhere in here. Either why did he wait for so long? if he's been stalking him, or if he hasn't been stalking him, how exactly did... You know, the only thing we know for sure is that he collected a lot of newspaper clippings of him. And then, how did Ted know what Rex looks like? Which, I don't know, I suppose that one is possibly explainable if, like, I can't really think of a 
sequence of events where Ted would have met Rex. I don't know, I guess Rex might have been in the newspaper and that was shown to Ted or something. It didn't even seem like John and Rex had met before then and really, why would they have? I really liked the joke, Rex's lines to to Ted, to John, about Ted and about the, the whole, you know, oh, where's your bunny rabbit? Teddy bear. And, and he invites him in and he's like, oh, old sweater. It was a little bit weird, the thing he did of pretending like other people were actually talking and, uh, you know, he, he would, uh, like, a mock ventriloquist act? I don't know. I didn't even really get it at first. I thought it would, when when he did it at the party, he just, like, goes, Oh, man, this place is huge. <laughs> what was that? And then at the, at the crowd, at the concert, he's pretending like other people are yelling, and he's like, oh, come on, man, give him a chance. It, yeah, that just seemed weird, but again, I might be trying to make everything in the movie make sense, and we're in, you know, in reality, it's, it's like, it's like with American Dad. There are a bunch of things that do make sense, but then there are a few that really don't, and he just, sticks that in there to bother those of us who want everything in fiction to make sense. So, yeah. The... I also didn't think there was that much payoff to the line, you know, Rex, like, you know, he's just promised John you know, I don't know you really well, but I'm gonna trust you one man to another. I gotta do this. And Rex is has just promised it, and then he, excuse me, after John leaves, he's like, excuse me, I'm gonna have sex with your girlfriend. And then he doesn't really do anything. I mean, he he asks her out once they break up, but are we to assume that he went and like? trying to pick her up the rest of the night, or what exactly was supposed to have, yeah. And I do kind of like, I mean, he is a douche in the movie, but still, it's, they didn't really go into overdrive with it, which I think was a good thing. I don't think, for example, it should have been, like, him in the climax. If, if they had done, like, the, the, the rom-com thing of the misunderstanding and he pretends that they were together, that, that he and Laurie were together, and in reality, Laurie is actually a, feels bad about something else, and then they have a con, you know, and he, like, were you with him, and all that, yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. That would have been awful. And just, in general, I mean, once, yeah, once she goes to get a cab home from the concert, we don't even see Rex after that point. I actually did expect him to have just one line, one last joke at the wedding, but, I don't know, it was fine that he wasn't there. Let me th Yeah, I, the, the, Sam Jones, I want to say that that's the name, the Flash Gordon actor, I really like the Ted joke about, you know, all the things that he taught us, like the, the, the last thing he says, all the things he taught us, 
the broad definition of the word actor, or acting, I think it was acting. That was really funny. It's really cool. I, I looked it up after the movie, just out of, yeah, that's him. Sam Jones, Flash Gordon, was in this movie. That's, that's really, really funny. That's, that's really cool that they got the real guy. And they shot the fantasy sequence with him and Wahlberg, and the and the thing with you know he he does the coke, and then the Asian who's already been mentioned, you know he doesn't have a gong, so it's okay. Wow. And then, and then he's cooking the the, the, the duck, and the, wow. Anyway, and he's. Yeah, and, and there's this, he's, he's upset about the wall, and understandably, and John tries to calm things down because he's a nice guy. I mean, that is part of why Laurie likes him. He is a good guy. He's not a complete, you know, he, he's got a little bit of the, this man-child thing going on, and he's from Boston, so he might be a little bit violent, I think. <clears throat> By the way, about the Boston thing, I like how the kid who played him as a kid, that's all about typecasting, Remember to use a Boston accent for the last half of the last line of dialogue that he had. That's, yeah, <laughs> just knock him dead, kid. Anyway, he's a nice guy, so he tries to calm things down. My name's John Bennett. Who, what's your name? Just, let's talk this over. We, we can be adults here. Someone's gonna pay for your wall, don't worry. What is your name? And the dude says me. And the and I, I swear I would not have gotten this. Like I said in the review, I didn't ever I have not watched Flash Gordon. But they mention it earlier the in in the film. Before that scene, they mentioned that the bad guy's name is Ming. So when he says Ming, Flash just goes out of his mind because he's on coke, he's also drunk, and he's big on this uh, this big role of his from the past. I mean, they they established that you know he he walks up to uh, up to John and immediately they're talking, they're they're doing stuff from the movie, you know, and so. He starts fighting with him, and the dude tries to fight back, and then Ted has it out with the duck. Wow, that was, yeah, <laughs> that was quite funny. I, <laughs> the the bit with the duck is maybe not something I personally would have. I, I think that's kind of one of those things of it's a current R-rated comedy. It has to have something completely off the wall. But it is one of the really only things in the entire movie that I felt was something that could have been cut where it would basically have been fine. And then there's the, the sex worker who apparently cramped on the floor in Lori's apartment. But I will admit that was kind of funny. Just the the different <laughs> her I'm not gonna call it overreacting. Her being mad at it about it, understandably. And then Walberg walks up Did someone crap on the floor? And then the thing with cleaning it Wahlberg's like, I don't want to know what, I don't want to know about it, and she's like, I'm, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I don't want to know about it, just tell me when it's gone, and, and she's like, oh my god, it's on my finger, never use that hand for cooking again, learn how to cook with your left hand, that was really
really funny. I... <laughs> I think that makes me a horrible person, but that was really, really funny. I liked that the... The boss, Ted's boss, where it's like Ted goes in and he doesn't even want the job. So, he's just instantly insulting this guy. And the guy's like, nobody ever talks to me like that. And he, he goes on insulting him and he's like, you're hired. You know, we, we, we need guys with guts. So, yeah, you've got stones. And... <laughs> And then later, he's like, having sex. You were having sex with a fellow employee on top of the food that we sell to people. We need more people like you, so you, you get a promotion. You have a pretty... You, you got a lot of problems, don't you? And I like the girlfriend as well. I, I like that they didn't give everything away about her in the trailers. In fact, in general, the trailers really didn't give too much away. It's just the, the Thunder song, the uh, White Trash Names bit, not too much else, really. And, and then a little bit of the joke. I'm glad that it, well, they couldn't have given away. I, I don't suppose. I. Maybe they could have, in the, in the Red Band trailer, given away the third shot. The, 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 that's where we draw the line of, the, of, of him flirting with Tammy Lynn. And anyway, yeah, the, I, I like that she's got, she, she's got attitude. And the, the thing with the, the misunderstanding at the double dating and... Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny, and she's like, oh, you, you better watch yourself, and what was it, Quincy or something like that? I have no idea where that is, but I'm, I'm staying away from there, from now on. <laughs> I imagine it's like a, an area of Boston or something like that. And hey, that does fly in the face of Ted's theory about Boston girls. Anyway. I really like the joke at the end when Lori, I guess an adult girl's wish is almost as strong, or as strong, I guess, as a, a young kid's wish, when Lori wishes Ted to be alive again, and he comes back and he's like pretending to be retarded. I know, it's awful, I shouldn't laugh, but I do. And the thing with you didn't put the stuffing in right, so I'm, I'm a little messed up, but you'll take care of me forever and ever and ever. That was... that was funny. And the... the I mean, when, when the, the stuffing... grab all the stuffing and the... Grab, uh, driving home... That was genuinely dramatic! And when you stop and think for a second, it's a teddy bear. I mean, we, we, we've gotten so attached to it. It's, yeah, they, they did a really good job. And I also just like how that's, at, at the end of the day, that's what he is. They don't do, he doesn't bleed Chucky style when the, boy, who grows up to be Taylor Lautner, rips his ear off, he doesn't, yeah, you know, there's just, there's the stuffing, and for, for a while I actually found myself wondering, can he feel pain, also because of the fight between him and John. Excuse me. 
I like how the, the, the more serious stuff of the movie, it, it really works. I didn't feel like any of it was forced. I mean, like I said, you see it coming. You see these, pretty much every plot development you, you can see coming because we've seen this plot done so many times. But when Ted is talking seriously to John, you know, when the two of them are talking seriously to each other, and John is like, you keep bringing me into trouble, and to an extent he's right, but then Ted comes back with, you need to stop making excuses for, you know, for your own dumb behavior. You, you keep blaming me when, in reality, you should just s say, no, I'm not going to do that because that's stupid. And, you know, and, and, and John's telling Lori, I'm not going to ask for another chance because I don't deserve it. And I just wanted to make sure that we part as friends. I owe you that. You know, the, the whole, yeah, it, it, it all felt genuine, and you really, yeah, it, it really worked. I really like that joke when Ted gets stolen, and he calls 911. Someone, some guy took my teddy bear. Hello? <laughs> I would imagine that would be the natural response of most 911 operators, yes. Oh, speaking of 911, that thing with the... And he, he got high on 9-11. Man, I just needed to get high that day. Wow. Oh, that's horrible. That is just horrible. Moving back towards more serious stuff. That thing of... You press Teddy and it has this one line. It says... It, it's... Yeah, yeah, it says, I love you in this... You know, very high-pitched... High-pitched. This childish sounding voice. I like how... Ted actually is, I guess not 35, 28, I suppose. I don't know, is he, was, was he seven when John was seven? Anyway, yes, you have this, he, he, you know, his voice changes as well. He has the voice of an adult when he's grown up. Anyway. Later on in the film, when he's an adult now, they, they hug at one point and uh, it accidentally presses the button and it says it's in that same pitch. I thought that maybe near the end of the film he would say it in his own voice in some kind of he admits it thing. I don't know. Just my expectation. Now, I really like how after the two guys, the two buddies, have a serious conversation about each other's failings, they do get out. Because that's kind of what guys are like. We, we don't deal all that well with having our failings pointed out to us. And if it's... Yeah, so they they fight, and it's really straight up a two guys fighting with kind of no holds barred, and and that was also where I really wondered if Ted felt all this punishment because for a while it looked fairly even. I mean, sure, Ted gets a bunch of punches in there, but John smashes him into the wall. And, yeah. 
and then it ends with you. And and you see the the TV coming. They they set it up briefly. It it, it sort of what's that? It it goes. I don't know. It wavers a little before falling over, and then falls over and ouch. And the thing I I like what sets it all off is. Some, day, some days, I wish I had just gotten a Teddy Ruxpin. Wow, that is... Then the gloves are off, you know. There were a few things that I felt were a little vague. At the concert, there's but one guy who runs up towards the stage trying to attack John, I think, and then John, like, lifts up the thing, and then the Boston comes out of him, out of him. He smacks the dude in the face with it, and dude falls over, security pulls away John, and then people are yelling, get off the stage. So I couldn't really tell, was that, like, a straggler, or was he, like... <laughs> Just expressing the general sense of dissent among the concert goers. I mean, I don't really blame them. That probably is what would happen in real life if someone actually tried to do one of those hokey, romantic surprises. Especially if you really couldn't sing. And he really, really could not sing. Yeah, that, although I'm not sure it's really a song he should be singing. It's been a while since I watched that movie. I, I don't know. It, it, just from it being a Bond movie, I have this feeling that the theme was originally sung by a woman. And from some of the notes that he was supposed to be hitting there... Possibly an African-American one. Anyway, yeah, I couldn't quite tell if that was just the, the first guy or... Did, I just feel like that should have been a little clearer. I mean, I, I get that it was... The joke was that it was so sudden that suddenly this guy is there. But, yeah. I suppose that might more or less do it. I like the Tom Skerritt thing about how first it's the yeah it's I guess it's basically a thing. Of People's bosses telling John that they know Tom Skerritt. First it's John's own boss, and then it's Rex also. It's me and Tom Skerritt, and and then at the wedding, Tom Skerritt, Tom Skerritt, wow. And then if. And Tom, like, turns to John's boss. My daughter had better still be alive, you son of a bitch. <laughs> that is horrible and really, really funny. I didn't really mind the Patrick Warburton running joke. But I didn't really get it. A gay version of Fight Club? I don't know. It just... I don't know. I've, I've seen in other movies where they kind of poke fun at the typical male fear of being homosexual oneself, not of other homosexual men. The sort of the the fear of other homosexual men 
for a man basically comes from the fear that they are a homosexual themselves. So the fact that there are other homosexual men reminds them some men are gay, maybe I'm gay. And so, yeah, so I've seen other movies that have that joke of a man worried that he's gay or made to think he's gay and stuff like that. So I guess it's supposed to be that, but there doesn't seem to be any conflict arising from it. Patrick Warburton kind of just accept, accepts it without any real, and he's just there for those three brief bits of the film. First, to saying, well, I was beat up, I can tell that I texted a guy asking him to beat me up, and then texting him, telling him thank you, and why exactly did he text him? Why didn't he say thank you? I mean, if, if you're dying, you would just yell, ah, you wouldn't bother writing, ah, on the wall. That's, that's all I'm saying. And then later, he's there with, I, I do like that he, I mean no offense to Ryan Reynolds, I like Ryan Reynolds, but he does have a little bit of, at least a metro look, and yeah, I, and they even have the, the kiss. It doesn't even really surprise me that, that Ryan was, was game. Not even particularly that Patrick was either, for that matter. But yeah, they're a cute enough couple. I really like that Sam Jones was the the priest and the thing where they got the ceremony by a very special priest and then he's like, by the power vested in me, by the church and the New York Jets. That was really funny. Yeah, that... I thought the movie did a really good job of establishing that Ted was kind of, you know, he was making John be late for work. And there was that thing of, you, all you have to do is not screw up and then you'll get my job in a month. So just, yeah, you know, this is, this is easy for you because this is a Hollywood movie and that's how these things go. I just want to set up here that you don't even have to work hard. It's, it's extremely easy. We, we basically want the audience to want to punch you in the face for not cinching this. That's, that's what we're doing here. Okay, John. And Ted gets him away from the party at Rex's and the whole thing, you know, it... And Laurie actually breaks up with him. I like the, that Ted was actually right about Bridget Jones. The, the thing about it, she's just, she'll be watching some Bridget Jones crap and call and then you'll talk together in the morning and then it cuts to her and she actually... Excuse me, she actually is watching Bridget Jones. Excuse me, so they actually make a joke out... Excuse me, out of that even after the... The actual serious moment of this thing. And it also works as the serious moment. thought that they would maybe do a boy who cried wolf thing when Ted calls and is all like this is really serious this is really important I was taken by that guy I thought that that would be you know I trusted you before you got me into trouble kind of thing I suppose that 
Well, I could talk a little bit more about just Giovanni Ribisi's character. I'm not crazy about the whole subplot of... I mean, it's set up early enough in the movie. I'm not claiming it came out of nowhere, and some good came out of it. It just does... They basically just needed to have this... They needed a plausible way for Ted to bite the dust. And... I don't know, I guess they wanted something big for the climax, maybe. Yeah, so that that's basically where that entire thing came from. And the chase goes on for far too long. First you've got this car chase, and then they're trying to run them down, and they're in that stadium, and then finally it gets to the point. I'm also really glad that Ted didn't take forever to die. He just had, I don't know, a minute maybe of life in him once he was in two. Yeah, the, the whole thing just... With that said, I will say... Giovanni dancing to... What was that? I think we're alone now or something? I didn't realize anyone still listened to the, Well, anyone, but... And it was like the video, the... I guess the music video, I, I wouldn't know. I know the song, I never actually... I couldn't even have s pointed to the woman singing that video and said that that's the artist behind I think we're alone now. He has the music video to I think we're alone now. I think I'm scared now. And dancing to it while sucking on a straw. Wow. And then they do the, the cliche of him turning off the phone and you know, Teddy, Teddy, and John. And he walks to the side, and there is Ribisi in the, the complete. In the, what was that? What, wasn't he wearing like a. What's it called? A robe or something? And he's looking completely psycho. As he was really funny, definitely. And the kid. Do I have to wash my hands before I play this game? I don't think I want to think about why he would ask a question like that. I, I don't... No. That is something I can go to my grave without completely comprehending. Yes. And just in general, I, I thought that that was... You know, pretty decent. And, and the, the thing with how he goes down with, you know, Don't take my teddy bear! That was pretty funny, and also very, very horrible, but mostly funny. And I suppose that pretty well covers everything I wanted to talk about. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.